entrepreneurs and professionals of Tampa Bay. Welcome to your hour for getting the information, the tools, and the connections for elevating your business. Welcome to Getting the Edge with Kelly Wilson. And here's your host, Kelly Wilson. Welcome to Getting the Edge. I'm your host, Kelly Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Getting the Edge is a product of Edge Business Magazine. And Edge uh, is a multi-platform media company that is specifically designed to assist small business owners with gaining a voice, visibility, and influence in the community. And we are here with you every week sharing stories and learning from great business professionals and community leaders, business owners in our community. I'm a firm believer we can learn so much from each other. We're all on this journey together. So why not bring us all together and unite and, and just share what we've learned and help. One of my favorite quotes is Henry Ford. If we're all moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. And that is really my whole methodology in, in my world. So for more information on Edge, you can check out edgebusinessmagazine.com. Uh, I definitely recommend and suggest uh, looking into our community partnerships. A great opportunity to a uh, lot of great benefits. Um, check it out. All the benefits are listed on our home page of the website uh, and you can consider subscribing as well uh, never miss a copy of edge business magazine the um, so excited we have so much in the works our uh, spring issue launched uh, beginning of May we've got our celebration of women uh, first annual celebration of women so excited about this new issue coming up uh, this will launch in August so really excited to features our uh, great new mayor uh, Jane Castor and nine other phenomenal women so uh, this will be our first annual because it's so hard to decide on which women <laughs> to focus and feature this issue and uh, many of them are just really special to me and women that have uh, been in my life for quite a while and have just done some amazing things in the community and are continuing to do so and I have an amazing woman sitting right next to me today too um, and so excited to have uh, Lisa Demi on the show Lisa thank you so much uh, for for joining us today look forward to having you on uh, Lisa it's you know again I think it goes back to community and uh, we've talked about it on the show just how great uh, not great people because I I mean, I mean like-minded people, people that are and caring, they just are attracted, I think, to one another. You and I, I think, on f social media, and I felt like I knew you. <laughs> uh, and then I uh, think through waves of change, maybe, luncheon, um, or somewhere we were. I mean, were. I think we've crossed paths yes. a, a zillion times. And, yeah. I, and I just stopped you because I felt like I know you and just said, you know, I know we don't, but let's let's meet right. and talk. That's and, right. That's and right. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's... It's funny, and I think I recommend everybody do that because sometimes you walk by people and you know you know them or you think you know them, you feel like you know them because social media allows mm -hmm. us to do that. Or sometimes we have business associates that are friends, and anyway, um, just just say, hey, <laughs> let's get together and talk and just kind of see. And you just never know. And, and, you know, never really have any expectations out of anything just, just to kind of start a friendship and see where it goes from there. So anyway, um, Happy. I see that's how that was. How many months ago now? May, wow. April. Um, end of April, mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. was the ways of yep. change. Love the Center for Women. Um, if you watch any much many of the Getting the Edge shows, I talk and plug a lot. The Center for Women, uh, the center org. Great uh, organization. Uh, Helen Gordon Davis founded in the late 70s, uh, and just uh, amazing all the different programs uh, that they do there. So uh, really pl proud to be one of the supporters and, and sponsors for, for them. So, yes, yeah, so we had a chance to sit down and get to know each other a little bit. And mm -hmm. I love your, um, your when I look at your information, speaker, social media, badass. Like, I love it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Lisa Demi and what you do and how you're going to help and educate me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, well, how much if, time do we have? Yeah, well, <laughs> um, for this one, only an hour. But, but um, no, I, I, I learned it from everybody after the show. You so. know, Kelly, you said something at the beginning of, of us talking today about um, about meeting people and that. And the relationship thing is really what's so important to me. Um, you know, I know it's a social media badass, but the, the whole the whole point for me of the social media, of using it as a tool, is not as a sales tool. A lot of people say social media is a sales tool, and I concur that it is. However, I think it's more of a relationship tool because, I mean, like you said, we felt like we knew each other already because we had seen each other. I think we were connected 
right. on social media already. And there's so many people that I've met through LinkedIn, through Facebook, through Twitter, so many relationships that I've been able to, um, to, to, to build and, and to grow through social media. And one of the things I always talk about, like I don't, you know, I don't teach anybody how to tweet or how to do Facebook or how to, um, you know, post on LinkedIn. But what I do teach them, and the thing that I do see that people don't do right on social media is, they they don't know what content to share, and they forget it's a conversation, and it's much like you and I meeting that day and having a conversation and getting to know each other. And I think that's what's so important to me about social media. I think maybe that people it's just misunderstood then. Yeah. On on and. and I don't think often people sit down and really think about the expectations of the results that they're looking for mm -hmm. or what, what goal do you have by posting or you need to have some kind of strategy, yeah. right? Yeah. So when you don't and you're just, you Throwing know. Throwing stuff right, out there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, I, you know, I, I mean, I, st I think all of us, I could probably still work on some of the strategy on it. And, and even with our page and, and with what we do, I, don't, I still don't think, and, and I think maybe we can use that as some examples as we talk too, because it, I think no matter how much we try, it's never um, kind of going forward consistently. There's always, there's not, there's not enough consistency, I guess. With right. It. I was talking to someone yesterday and um, actually, or it wasn't yet, it, it, some time ago, <laughs> and they were talking about the, the, that and that um, you need to have scheduled times each day that things should go out. And I mean, I don't, we don't, I mean, even as a media company, we don't necessarily have them popping out at the exact time that they're supposed to. Yeah, but I, I feel like the, uh, the other side of the coin is to be too automated and to be too predictable and to be too um, formal. I, I feel like for me, and, and of course, you know, social media is one size does not fit all. I, I think that it should reflect who you are. So if you're very regimented, then your social media could be very regimented. If you're like me, I just post, you know, I, I definitely post well, up front, but I also post when the spirit moves me. Right. You know, so I think it, it's what's probably more important, you said, is the consistency and the message and what you're sharing with people. And are you letting them get to know you? Are you letting them in? Is it all about you? Or is it about them? What, what's the point? What's your strategy? Who are you talking to? What's the message? You know, and I, it, it, I, I struggle, too, in um, sharing things all the time and saying what I'm doing and where I'm going or mm -hmm. what. And I know it's conversation starter, and it gets people, because I see other people do it, too, and I think I used to be better at that. And I'm not sure why I withdrew a little bit as much we as get I... Busy. We get busy, and that's the first thing that falls by the wayside is your marketing and your, you know, because we're like, well, I, you know, I got to be here, and I got to be at the studio, and I got to meet so-and-so, and I've got to get my, my, my magazine out or whatever it is, and that's the thing that just kind of falls by the way. It's much like working out. You know, if you don't put it on your calendar, you're never going to do it. Can, yeah, can I say, too, I mean, I think, and I don't know why, I should have gotten, I think, you know, better at it, but I, I almost, like, when I mentioned like kind of withdrawn earlier, sometimes it's hard for me to say, and I meet great people and do, you know, and, and but sometimes it's, it's hard for me to say what I'm doing. I don't want everyone to sound like I'm bragging about something. Yeah. Oh, I've got a meeting with so-and-so today. You know, sometimes if I have a picture and I can, I can reflect on something that's then promoting them mm -hmm. and me, that's okay. But sometimes I know it's hard for me. I shouldn't, I don't know why I've kind of gone into this. I mean, I felt like I've always been humble. I've definitely more as I've grown in business. And I almost think it should be the opposite. Don't but you? It's marketing, right? And I mean, I think people can tell when you're being um, authentic and people can tell when you're trying to be uh, self-serving or a little too much. And I think there's definitely a line. And I think if you're representing yourself as you would in real life with anybody on social media, I don't think anybody takes it that way. And, and that, that's a big barrier, though, for a lot of my clients. When I'm teaching them about their message, like, well, I want to talk about myself. almost, too. Yeah, like, but you have to talk about yourself. Part of, of your social media strategy should definitely be promotion. It just shouldn't be all of your social media strategy. And what I have found, and like, so Edge will be six in September. So we've, you know, we've been working on this and building it. And then even my own personal brand. And I have found when I, when I share personal stuff, mm -hmm. whether, whether it's information on my kids and I, or we're at, we're at the beach or doing stuff. Unfortunately, we don't do, <laughs> I work too much. We don't do enough of that. But, um, People are engaged more. Yeah. They, they want to see that personal side they of you. Because they want to know you. They want to know you. They don't, you know, I, 
there's so much noise out in the world today and there's so many people who do what you do and so many people who do what I do. And there's, you know, there's a million bankers and a million realtors and a million of everything. Right. right? And I think it's more important for people to connect personally with whomever that person is. And when you can use social media as a tool to let people get to know you and to be authentic and be, and be willing to be vulnerable sometimes, right. I think people go, oh, wow, I, wow, I really like Kelly. She, she took her kids to the beach. I take my kids to the beach or, you know, like I have dogs. And when I post pictures of my dogs, they don't do anything with my business. I wish they would because it would be cheap <laughs> help. But people are like, oh, I love your dogs. You know, so it's just um, letting people get to know who you are, what's important to you. And then, like, like that's the, the hook maybe that makes them go, let me find out more about Kelly. Let me find out more about Edge because they have, there's a familiarity there for them. And I think that's what's important about it. And you are right. There is so much information out there. It's, uh, you, you hit, uh, you go on to, I'm sometimes so late at night, maybe I'll go, so I'll have time where I can really scroll and go through Facebook or one of the sites and you click onto a video and then the next thing you know, it's all these videos. And you, mm -hmm. it's like one, hi, I experienced this today. And then it, you know, you scrolls down and it's someone else's story and someone else's story. And I mean, you, so, yes, it, it, I guess everything's too a way to be heard in a sense too and or have your voice or have yourself like stand out and, yeah. well, and or, or connection to, to and you don't really need to connect with everyone absolutely I mean, it's, it's it's like that circle with the dot in the middle it's, yeah, it, yeah. that's really really right like yeah. of who who our target is and, and you don't i mean honestly a lot of people tell me well what if people don't like me if i'm being my real self what if people don't like me and i always say well, what if you spend a coffee or you try to get to know them over a course of a few weeks and they find out that they, they don't like you? So, and not, I hope this doesn't come out wrong, but we have limited time anymore. So I want people to find out they don't like me right away. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Right. So that right. way I'm not wasting their time. Right. And, you know, time is precious. So, and, and I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Right. And that's fine because I want to work with people who who connect with me. I want to work with people who, who my message resonates for them. I don't have to connect with everybody. I don't have to be the right choice for everybody, but I want to be the right choice for somebody. Right. And that goes back to that circle with a dot. And yeah. it really, if we can cater to that or, or connect just, just with that, we're good. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a uh, quick break. Uh, during the break, check out edgebusinessmagazine.com. Uh, but don't go far. We'll be right back more with Lisa Demi. This is the Cannabis Podcast, powered by True Leave on Radio Influence. It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes.
Welcome back to Getting the Edge. I'm your host, Kelly Wilson. Thank you so much again for uh, joining us today. So excited to be joined uh, and uh, by Lisa Demi. Again, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. You know, me. I, I enjoy having these conversations and because... Uh, I, you know, I think when you finally get to the point in life where you realize you don't have all the answers, <laughs> that you just, every time you sit down with someone, you're like mm -hmm. a sponge. And, and that's, again, that's really what Edge is all about by the guests and, and like you being here today or by the articles we have in the magazine or our newsletters or uh, all of it is, is so that, that we can all learn. I think when you finally come to the conclusion that we don't know everything. Then, then I think almost. Wait, me. I don't know everything. No, oh. no, you actually don't. Can believe? Can you believe it or not? It's it's crazy. At eighteen, I thought I had all the answers. You couldn't have Our told me. Our parents were right. Right, yeah. right. You couldn't have told me anything. <laughs> and then you know, here I am, all these years later, and I I, I still am, am learning. But um, anyway, tell us a little bit. I wanted to, to pick your brain a lot about social media and strategies. But how did you? What made you want to get into social media? Where did that passion come from? <laughs> um, so uh, I was working in my parents' business at the time, and I had a degree in marketing. And I remember, uh, this will date me a little bit, but social media was really just kind of coming into its own a little bit. I remember being fascinated by the medium and thinking, well, we don't have to spend a lot of money to market our business. We could market digitally. And I've always been a bit of a performer, so I had no problem with jumping on to uh, a video or jumping into Twitter or Facebook or whatever it was. I think the main ones were LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to do little skits of our business and make everyone in the office do these little plays, um, including my father, my, which was hysterical. And uh, I kind of caught the bug. And I remember we would get, um, we were an inspection company and we would get, interest from other people via these different mediums and uh, I thought it was just so fascinating that we could connect with other people on a much grander scale right. than the way old advertising used to do and um, sadly the you know the marketing the housing market tanked and uh, my we told my parents you, you have to retire now because things are bad and uh, I had started working part-time for some friends of mine who had a very small social media firm and I kind of cut my teeth doing that. And I worked with them for a couple years or so. And I remember um, with their blessing going out on my own. And this was, man, I don't even remember how long ago this was now. But I started my own firm and grew to about 40 clients. Oh, wow. And just realized how, I mean, it just it was so much fun. It's just so cool to be like kind of on the cutting edge still because nobody really knew what to do with it. And um, it was, you know, now there's all these certifications and you can take social media courses. And then we were like, I don't know, let's try it and see what happens. So we kind of very much trial and error figured out how to do things, what would work, blogging. Video wasn't anywhere near as big as it is now. So we were kind of doing a little video. And well, as you grew to 40 clients, where did those clients come from? Like what over. methods did you use to obtain those uh, the honestly, tips the, the, the way that worked is because I'm a, like, I networked my behind off. Okay. Networking. And I, absolutely. And, and again, you know, we talk about relationship. I don't look at networking as networking. I look at it more like creating relationship relationships. Right. Exactly. And so I had done a lot of networking in my old business. And so even people still didn't know what social media was. They trusted me enough to say, all right, we trust you. We're going to let you take over whatever it is you want to do with this. And that was really how I got my first like 10 clients for, was like that. Then it was all kind of word of mouth. And then I became known as the social media lady. And um, <laughs> yeah. so. Um, and then the social media badass. <laughs> well, that was me. I, oh, called, okay. I called myself that because I, <laughs> again, I wanted to stand out from, you know, all the people on LinkedIn. What were the, what are the titles you can give yourself? And I thought, well, I don't, I don't see any social media badasses. Right. So I'll be that. Right. Yeah. No, I love it. And, and you, you just it fits your personality. <laughs> and I, and I know, I think it, it makes for a great guest too, and just great conversation, but in great company. I mean, you know, you make people laugh and, and you make, even even if you don't understand social media, you make it fun. I mean, and you like got to be a perform. It must be the performer side of you. I think so. Yeah, I think so. It's got. I mean, I mean the. I think you know we talked about doing something that you're passionate about and really loving something. And I I love social media and I really love you know like when you see the light bulb go off over someone's head and you're like oh oh you know like I do a lot of tr training and teaching now, um, and when they see when they get it when it clicks for them. 
it's just like it's almost like being on stage again. It's like seeing them understand it and be able to manage it and take care of it themselves and use it and watch them grow their business with using social media as one of their tools. Right. It's really cool. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I think you, it really benefits you and can be substantial when you boost and do different things. And I mm -hmm. want to get your opinion on some of that, but, but overall, I mean, it is a free resource. I mean, other than time, right. That you right. have to your invest worth, into it, sure. but it, it's, it gives you a presence mm -hmm. and some visibility as you're uh, beginning to figure things out. I think of where, where your clients are and, and the, best way to, to to maneuver through it, I guess is the best way to say that. When you, you know, I have clients that'll come to me sometimes and then we've talked or we do, um, anyway, some of you know, like, what do they do with all their stuff? You know, they've got a ton of photography. They mm -hmm. might have, or even some videos. But, like, what tips can you provide on creating strategies of what to do then with this content? So, so I guess, number one, some people's problem might, they need the content. Yeah. Right? So we went kind of talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then once you have the content, how do you then provide a strategy of what to do with it? Um, that And that's a really great question uh, because I think it's either that they don't have enough content or that they don't know what to do with their content. Right. It's always those two things. If they don't have enough content, it's because they haven't thought, like they, they need to see themselves as the expert in their business. And the content is the questions that they get asked over and over and over again by their clients. That's the content and the, and the content that's sharing of themselves. So a lot of times, um, you know, I take people through a course and we'll, we'll talk about what's important to them and what's important to their clients and what's the personality of their business. And then we start to look at the questions that they get asked and we start to develop these what I call buckets of content because we don't always want to be selling on social media. That's like... Right. You know, the thing I always that say. That kind of contradicts what we just were saying. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. I mean, we, don't we all fast forward through the commercials on TV when we're watching something on TV? And, uh, you know, right. so people don't want to listen to that on their social media either. And I think that. Um, that, that, that goes back. I want to talk about that, too, when we, when we get to that. Is balance. Then how do you how do you know what's enough and what's not too much? And you have to test it out. I mean, there you, you know, there is one one size does not fit all in social media. And I, I, I typically start off my clients and I tell them, all right, 10 percent of what your message should be should be promotion. The rest of it should fit in these other buckets, whether it's motivational, whether it's educational, whether it's local flavor, whether it's relationship building. There are all these buckets that I, I encourage my clients to, to fill out and to start dropping content that fits into those buckets. Because now then when you're sitting in front of your computer on the day that you're uh, you know, scheduling some of your social media, you're not going, well, what am I going to talk about today? Now you have these buckets that you've already determined. I need to talk about promotion 10% a week. I need to talk about relationship 20% a week or so on until you have 100% worth of a bucket, right? Mm. And so, so how much should you then post per bucket? Or right? well, it depends or topic on, in the bucket. It, it depends on what you're comfortable with because you talked about consistency. So I think the other, another mistake people think is if I have social media, I have to have it all. I have to have every single platform there is. And there are questions you should be asking yourself is, one, how much time do you have to, to manage it? Because social media is a conversation. And if you're not following through with the conversation on any one platform or you're not being consistent, you're really doing yourself a disservice. So rather than having five platforms that you're not going to manage all the time, have two that you can be on top right. of. And the, the other question is, where is your audience watching? Is your audience on, on uh, Instagram? Is your audience on Facebook? Is your audience on LinkedIn? You should be looking at the platform that is most used by your audience, and that's also where you should be focusing. So let me ask you a question. So even, even with ours, uh, like with Edge, our mission with Edge is obviously to share the, the, the magazine with as many people as possible. We want everyone benefiting from the articles we provide and the stories. And we also want to promote our advertising sponsors and sure. partners, and we want to promote our shows and getting the Edge. I mean, it, it's not just when Edge gets pushed, it's all of us that are, are a part of it, that, that right. are pushed. Um, so what's interesting, so we've been on Facebook. In fact, if you check out our uh, Facebook page, Edge Business Magazine, um, you can look at events that we've done since 2014. Even actually our very first event, 2013, uh, the albums are there. So that's what we started with. Right. And, you know, we just... Uh, 
and I've been growing, I tried to grow my own personal pages as well, but then LinkedIn, we started growing uh, Twitter. I have some issues with Twitter. We're going to talk about Twitter. I talk too much to go on to Twitter. You're, you're Mac to character. So like how to, anyway. But Twitter's a really great relationship building tool. I want to talk about that because Andy Gold uh, had mentioned that mm -hmm. and you helped. So definitely I, I need some help there. But, sure. So, but as, so Instagram. Mm -hmm. We started exploring Instagram, and we're new to it. I think in the last six months, mm -hmm. we've we've um, and again, it's a work in progress. If you check out our Instagram page, but what I thought found interesting is every business in Tampa, many businesses, which are are our of who we're pushing to, uh, business owners, uh, they're on. They have a they have a page. Yeah. So where before I kind of thought business was more Facebook, LinkedIn. I, I love LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done really well with building LinkedIn and I've made a lot of great relationships from LinkedIn. Um, but now, so it's hard to choose when, and, you know, there are so many businesses represented on Instagram. In my, though, uh, feedback, what I've seen so far, though, I can't tell. And again, not everything's about how to monetize, right? But right. how do you turn some of that, like, I don't even know that some of the businesses and some of the following that we, that we might have are real businesses and at the level where they could share and provide content. And so I don't know. I'm, I'm still torn of how to utilize. Well, you guys, for Edge, you definitely should be on Instagram because it's a very visual medium and what you do is very visual whether it's um, the graphics whether it's the pictures but video too because vi Instagram shows. has IGTV and that's their long form video and that is a, a place that I think not enough people take advantage of um, you know you video you can do the little short short videos um, that you post up there but then there's that IGTV that allows you to post a longer form so video. So like from a YouTube video or whatever, you could post that video? You're like going to want to post the native video, not the YouTube video. Oh, link. I see. Yeah. So the, the original video. Yes. Mm -hmm. And wow. So it allows that, because I know those capabilities, that's a lot of file. Right? Um, I mean, well, but you know, uh, surprisingly, I think people tell themselves it, it takes a long time, but if you have a process and if you get really comfortable with it, well, like for instance, when I record a video, it goes up on every platform. It goes on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, IGTV. It goes everywhere that I have a platform. And it's just, a, it's like for me, it's a, you know, it's knowing how, um, you know, I do it all the time. So it's a very much of an automatic thing anymore. So that's why I'm telling you that people don't have to take everything on because get comfortable with one thing and get it to a place where you can move forward and add something else. And for me, the video is like second nature. All right, well, we're going to talk about getting a little comfortable with the first thing, or however you just put that. Uh, don't go far. We'll be right back. Uh, more with Lisa Demi when we come back. This is the Cannabis Podcast, powered by Leaf on Radio Influence. It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes.
Welcome back to Getting the Edge. Thanks again so much for being with us today. So excited to be joined by Lisa Demi, and I need this, and, and I know we all do, uh, and just learning, and I think, you know, there's so many misconceptions. Um, it's social media badass, by the way, I just in case you <laughs> forgot during the commercial, just want to make sure you remember. Um, it, wow, it, it's, it's okay. So we, before break, we talked a little bit about Instagram. They've got the great video capabilities, so mm -hmm. that's lesson learned, okay? So kind of know that, and utilize those, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, let's talk about Twitter for a second. Okay. When you talk a lot, I mean, like, I'm, I, I never know what to say. And as soon as I start typing on Twitter, trying to, again, it's strategy. You're supposed to have content. But, I mean, even on my personal stuff, I guess even from a personal perspective, you should have strategy. Sure. Right, if you're trying to build your own personal brand. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, yeah, I just can't do it. I get... I, it forces you to focus on the main part of the message. And Kelly, I talk a lot too, so I totally get what you're saying because you're like, oh, I, but I can't get my message across. And you, you actually can, and you get better at it as you utilize it more. So you, you, know, you mentioned that as a relationship builder, and I find that funny because like I, when, you, can only, when you're maxed at what you can say, and I, I find it hard to find people to connect with. I, you know, so here's the, here's a strategy that I use sometimes is I'll, um, I, th I have probably more conversation on Twitter than I do any other platform. And what I like about it is you, you don't, people don't have to accept you as a like, you can follow someone and comment and depending on how active they are, or how much they pay attention, you can really form some really great relationships through Twitter. So, um, for instance, um, and I won't be political, but I was watching the Democratic um, uh, debate, and um, I was watching it on Twitter with, you know, watching it on TV and watching it on Twitter, and there was a lot of conversation obviously happening there, and it was really cool to be able to see, you know, because people say stuff on Twitter they probably wouldn't say anywhere else because it moves so fast, but it was really interesting to see some of the commentary on Twitter and be able as to... As it's happening. As it's happening, right, like right then and there. And I made a lot of connections that night and maybe made some enemies that night too, which again, we talk about, it's okay if you don't like me, I'm not right. everybody's cup of tea. But what's really cool about it is you can really infuse yourself in the conversation very easily on Twitter, in my opinion. Um, I typically, it's funny, people are like, well, I meet people on LinkedIn and then I connect with them on Twitter and Facebook and I usually come the other way like if it's not somebody I personally know I'll meet them on Twitter then connect with them on LinkedIn and Facebook because Twitter gives me more access to them where I, I maybe don't have that same access on LinkedIn or Facebook well uh, so on Twitter you can follow so mm -hmm. you don't it's a little different to where somebody doesn't have to accept a friendship or a connection right they just don't have to follow you back Right. Yeah. But then they don't know you unless they check through to see who's following them, which depending on how many followers well, but that's, they have. But that's not what you're looking at. The, what, what you're looking at on Twitter is how you're are, communicating. what's the conversation you're having with them. It's not you're so engaging much, directly yes, with them. Yes, exactly. And it's not so much to like someone and hope they like you back. It's how meaningful of a conversation are you having? Like, you know, have you thought out what you're saying? Is it a thoughtful interaction? Not just a, hey, I love what you're saying or I agree. Like those, that's, to me, that's empty. Right. Uh, what, what are you adding to the conversation? Value. Like what, yes. yeah, what are you contributing to? Yes. And I, I get it. Yeah. But I guess so it would have to be conversation or a, a matter of that or a subject, right, that mm -hmm. you, you, you're you passionate about yes. or that you have some, you know, that you, that's in your <laughs> realm. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, so you, like I can't do that with a lot of people on Twitter because it is time consuming. Right. But what I'll typically do is I might follow three or four people and start engaging with com in conversation with them. Or I'll look to see, you know, there's some people who I think very highly of, you know, like Andy Gold would be one of them. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I might would look and say, who's Andy following? Who's Andy communicating with? And then I'll just kind of jump into the conversation. And, you know, it, there's not as much of a, like you would never do that in a networking event where you just break into the conversation. But that's how Twitter's kind of set up where you can just join along because that's what they want you to do. They want you to comment. They want you to retweet. They want you to share. But, you know, think about when yeah. people do that for you. Don't yeah. you go, oh, yeah, they shared my stuff or they liked my stuff right. or they commented on my stuff. You like that, right? Right. So that's what you're doing on Twitter. And typically what I'll do is I'll pick a handful of people or a topic, like you said, and that will be my focus for 
uh, maybe a month or so until I feel like I've created a relationship. And, and then I don't just throw them aside, but then it's more of a, and I don't want this to sound bad, it's more of a maintenance kind of thing as opposed to a let me dig deep. Because much like you have friends in the real, wor real world, you would never be, hey, Kelly, you and I are friends. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm your friend now, so I don't have to talk to you anymore. We, we would never do that, right? Right. It's the same thing on social media. You still have to be part of the conversation. Well, is it the same? Well, I guess you said you're picking up certain people to kind of follow, right? And then, mm -hmm. then you're engaging with them. Now, are you... Do you come up with your own content and different things that you're doing? To, I'm sure you probably do a mixture of both, where you're mm -hmm. trying to engage the conversation. Yeah. I was going to say control it, but I don't know if that's even something you want to do. Well, you, no, you don't want to control it. I, I mean, my, mine is what you see is what you get. And I, I'm not on lockdown on anything on social media. Like anybody who, you can find me on every social media platform and there's no barrier or no lockdown or no, you know, I, I don't have anybody blocked. And, um, so what I think is really important is a lot of times it's, it's people like, yeah, but what am I sharing? Well, it is what are you sharing, but also how are you being involved in their conversation? Because I, it's not always about what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's about what you're talking about and how am I contributing to what you're talking about? So it's both. Um, you know, I have evergreen, conversa or evergreen content, which is my own content. But then I will also, you know, like um, there are people in Tampa who are amazing marketing people who I will share their stuff. There are people I don't even know who are amazing marketing yeah. people, and I'll share their stuff. And not as an, an agenda, because if I'm sharing it, it still reflects me on me. So it can't be, well, you know, so-and-so marketing professional of the world said this, and I don't agree with it, but I'm trying to, you know, hang on to their... their um, whatever network or whatever you want to call it i for me it's really important i have to have integrity with all the content right. i'm sharing whether it's mine or somebody else's absolutely yeah it's interesting <sighs> <laughs> this is what happens a lot in classes that I teach is that like, the response you get yeah is that, that yeah it's probably it probably is typical yeah. <laughs> it, it yeah it it is just a lot to and it, it is so how and again you you love social media mm -hmm. and it is um but I was going to ask, my question was, how much time are you investing then into, let's just say, if you're searching for like the, the conversations to get involved, but I guess that's not hard if you're only choosing a few people to follow. Yeah, I mean, or, that, or that's, main. Why, you, that's why I think it's really important for people to say, how much time do I have to invest in social, in whatever social media they're doing? And then think about where is your time best served? So they don't have to do every platform. They don't have to be, you know, like people are like, well, you're on social media every day. Well, yeah, it's my job. I am on social media every day. But for someone who might be a realtor or someone who might be um, a professor like Andy, they, they have, their job is not on social media. Right. So you have other things that you have to manage and you have to look at what am I sharing and how can I share it and how can my time best be used? What's the best bang for my buck, in other words? What's the best bang for my time invested in my social media? And that's the things that I tell people to think about. We, we can't all be Gary Vaynerchuk because we don't have a camera following us around 24-7, <laughs> you know? But we can be a good right. Lisa or a good Kelly or a good Andy or whomever it is. You know, I guess you've kind of re-enlightened me on... Facebook and my work is done here. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. It's almost like a little light just went off. It's it kind of takes me back to why I started using it in the first place. Was it was building relationships mm -hmm. and it was connecting. That's what you're doing with this, right? Too, right? Well, I think you get to a point where then you're so into that mm -hmm. and it's so that and it's it's all that and and being in the business too much that I'd kind of not that I'm not connected with a lot of the people, but a lot of them are in are involved, sure. so I'm still with them, but just on a different level. Mm -hmm. But that I it, I need to get back into where it started and where those relationships started, and and support and back them. Yeah, from that perspective, absolutely, and beyond just sharing, you know, their a post here or there, or in helping promote their businesses, but being involved in their lives. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Thanks for that. Yeah, but you know, it, it I I. Really kind of, but it goes back to how I said you and I came to to come to this friendship now that we have anyway. It yeah. was from a relationship that first 
derived, that's the right word to use, yeah. from, from the social media platforms, yeah. that we felt like we knew one another. Yeah. So with me not being involved and posting and supporting, kind of doing that, I'm not those, I'm not building any of those new ones. And your and also your exposure on, you know, like on social media, people, it's so funny because you had Andy Gold here earlier and Andy's like, man, I see you everywhere. Well, you see me on social media everywhere. And that's how, even though I haven't been able to go to events as much as often as They still as feel like to see you all it, Exactly. Right. So it's a way to keep top of mind awareness. It's a way to keep yourself relevant. It's a way to keep people connected with you, albeit a digital connection. Um, the, you know, I'm Cuban and Italian, so I, you still got to take it offline and be with people in real life. But uh, think about all the people that you can connect with and reach when you start off on that digital foot, if you will. And then you can bring it into something more meaningful. But the digital door gives you that chance to, to connect with more people than you normally would have. You know, I'm right. not I'm not walking and knocking on people's doors down in my neighborhood, <laughs> but you know, because they, they would think I was a crazy person. Right. But I can do that digitally, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Well, and the, the reach again, time management. We're we're all on a time crunch, but right. but you can be just as impactful. I guess I would like to take since I have this new epiphany and and <laughs> and realiza real, realization, but I, I'm bad with words today. Um, but I still would like to understand Twitter a little more mm -hmm. and how I can, because I've always enjoyed Facebook, I, not as much as I, I, I'm going to start enjoying it again. And But uh, Twitter is just so challenging. It's, it's so funny because Twitter was probably one of the first platforms I really started to utilize. And I remember the I you know, I, in my bio it says I remember my first tweet. And I remember being a wreck because I was like, oh my God, I'm tweeting. And, you know, what if people don't like me or if, what if it's stupid what I say? And um, I kind of got away from Twitter, but re in the recent years, I've gotten back to Twitter for that very reason of I can have a conversation with anybody. Yeah. With anybody. Well, I, I want to take a quick break, but we're going to talk more about having conversations with anybody. So <laughs> don't, go, don't go far. We'll be right back more with Lisa Demi. This is the Cannabis Podcast, powered by Leaf on Radio Influence. It's an inside look and the scientific facts in and around the world of medical cannabis. Now, here is your host, Ian Beckles. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes.
Welcome back to Getting the Edge. Thanks again so much uh, for being with us today. I'm your host, Kelly Wilson. And I, I, if you can see steam <laughs> coming out of my head, I, I probably have it. I'm, I'm frustrated, but, but also learning a lot. And again, um, I think, you know, again, you'd helped that with that realization of why I uh, enjoyed social media so much in the beginning. And and again, you're a prime example of had had I not been on it the way that I was, we wouldn't probably right. be sitting here today. Probably, probably would have, but you never know. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of community, uh, our um, friends, but still, anyway. Hi, yeah, yeah. Here's so much. Uh, I recommend everybody just reach out um, and find out what you can. And, and it really, it is, it's about strategy. So let's talk a little bit about strategy. Okay, okay. so you have this content. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have done some research. You know who your demographic is. You know the type of information that you want to provide. Mm -hmm. Or I guess let's even start back up. How do you find the information that you want to provide? You, well, you, you have the information already. So let's take, a, let's take a realtor, for instance. So you have a realtor, and obviously they need to talk about their services occasionally, but they're also going to talk about things around their topic. So they're going to talk about credit. They're going to talk about um, curb appeal. They're going to talk about moving costs. They're going to talk about um, insurance. They're going to talk about things that aren't really real estate, but are still in that realm. Right. Because what you want to do is you want people to go, uh, let me go and check out ABC Realty because they know everything. And you want to set yourself up as the resource. Like you want to be able to help them as much as possible because when anything, even a remotely real estate, um, related comes up, you want them to go, I, I know who to go talk right. to. I know who to go check out. So you're really thinking about, you're looking at what content lives around your main service or your main product and what things around that can you talk about as well. Because remember, we don't want to talk about ourselves right. all the time. And you don't want to always talk about the product, right? right. Even whether it's, well, the individual, the product, you, but there can be information around mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that can be... Um, Okay, so then how, how often should we be posting? Um, if it were up to me, people would post multiple times a day. Um, but everybody doesn't have the luxury of doing that. So if you have a social media manager or, or a marketing uh, firm who can manage your social media, they have more resources. But I will tell you that you really can post quite a bit. Um, one, one of the classes I teach is a social media marketing on the go because I, I don't have time to sit in front of my computer and do social media all day long. Right. So a lot of what I'm doing is using my, my smartphone to get myself out there somehow, even when I'm running around all day long. Um, I, you know, I think, again, it's not one size fits all. It's what you can comfortably fit into your day that, that you can comfortably monitor because it's not just about putting the content out. It's also about are you going to be able to respond if someone comments are there certain analytics you should be following? Like um, like data, like like response, or if you're posting, should there be a certain level of response? Yeah, that, definitely. That you're yeah. looking to get back. Like, well, uh, you know, here, here's what I think. I think people sometimes get a little too engrossed in the numbers, and I would rather have 100 engaged followers on my Facebook page than a thousand who hardly right. even come to my page. Right. So I'm really looking at what is the quality of the content, what is the quality of the followers, what is the quality of the engagement and the commenting and the sharing and all, what's the quality that I'm looking for that more than a lot of people. I mean, is a lot of people great? Sure. Right. Don't, and I'm not going to tell you that I don't go, oh, I got 512 views on this. Wow. You know, like, I'm, I'm not going to tell you I don't do that. You definitely have to look at your analytics because you want to find out what's getting a response. What are people, what, what are they finding to be relevant? And you want to definitely be adjusting your content or the times that you post or how often you post based on your, your um, uh, analytics. So you, you certainly, I'm not saying, you know, analytics are stupid. They're, they're definitely a, a help for you. Well, it's, well, and it's what, you know, our, our return on investment with anything. From a business perspective, mm -hmm. you know, people are got to have, you know, some kind of gauge in sure. a sense to see, okay, if I'm spending this much time and, 
relationship building, I would say it should be done without expectations, right? right. But but when you're investing or if a business is paying it, you know, an employee or hiring someone, there are certain expectations that they want. Absolutely. I, but I guess with marketing, you know, there are different types of marketing than right. advertising, right? There, there's branding that can just be consistently building your sure. name in the community, mm -hmm. or it can be actual, you know, when we create ads, you know, there's, there's all just different messages, obviously, right, that, right. that we're trying to convey. So um, it depends. You know, what those expectations are. What, what's your end goal? Right? And, it, and it also it doesn't happen overnight. You know, so people think that, well, I got a Facebook page. Now, how come my phone's <laughs> not ringing? And I'm like, well, it takes, you know, you have to build that trust in your audience. And you have to build that you're worthy of someone following you. You know, it's, it can't just be content that you just spit out all day long. It has to be really quality, really carefully thought out content that resonates with people. So, it, and it takes time to do that. Well, what, do, let's talk about the algorithm. You hear it often with Facebook and business pages, and it, and they do change things often. Mm -hmm. And not every they want you to boost your post, Absolutely. and that's their how they're making money. Mm -hmm. So, what's your opinion on that, or does it affect us greatly? I do it. Uh, yeah. You boost posts. I, I do, um, but I, I don't think I do it on the um, scale that people might think I do. Uh, for me, I, I definitely will boost posts, and it's, it's actually it's counterintuitive. Um, you should be boosting posts that are already getting some um, good reaction. Those are the posts you should be boosting, right. not the ones that aren't really. I mean, you, you can, obviously, right. but I typically will boost those kinds of posts, or I'll boost if I'm having an event or if um, I'm trying to sell a course or something like that. But it's a small boost. It's not a big boost. I actually learned this from a, another really great social media practitioner in Tampa is Kim Randall. And Kim was the one who kind of was like, Here, here's what you want to do. You don't want to spend $50 on a boosting something. You want to spend $5 or $10 and try it out a little bit here and then adjust it and so on and so on until you get the response that you want. Imagine if you spend $50 on a boost and you're wrong. Right. It would be greater if you spent $5 on a boost and you're wrong and then you can adjust and spend another $5 and get closer to what it is you want. So I definitely do boost, but it's not this um, enormous boosting right not not for your regular you know if i'm microsoft or mcdonald's or coca-cola or whomever it is i i have the budget to do that but if i'm joe tampa I, maybe i don't have that budget right yeah, it's interesting, and and that is what's great, I think, too, about those opportunities is that they really can fit any budget. Mm -hmm. Obviously, what you get out of it are what kind of what you pay for. Sure. But um, let let's talk a little bit about hashtags. Okay. <laughs> that, you know, I, I have trouble with those even. And, yeah. You know, it just again, it's I have issues conforming. Okay. You know, <laughs> it's it's I guess that's that rebellion entrepreneur in me. You know mm -hmm. that, but again those can hinder you more than anything when you hold back from sure. fighting something. You just follow trends and go with it. But I'm definitely not the follower type where, so it's, I don't know, like to me, and I, I, I get it. Hashtag ties it in with other, other information, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It almost seems You're, like you it takes the value away from the conversation. Yes and no. Okay. I'm going to tell you where, um, so you, first of all, you could ask five different people their opinion right. on the hashtags, you're going to get five different opinions. That's with anything right. in life, I'm, business. So I'm not right, right. okay? Right. Just so you know. Okay. I'm not right, okay, guys? <laughs> but what I have found for me, the most, the best use of hashtags for me, I have found in LinkedIn and in Instagram. Because LinkedIn right now, they serve, like if you use certain hashtags, they will serve you the content that has those same hashtags in it. So if I'm following a lot of uh, um, posts that have marketing, hashtag marketing or hashtag social media, I'm going to see a lot more of that. Also, LinkedIn's done something really clever where when you are posting, they will s suggest hashtags right, for you. Right. And they do one of two things. It's either hashtags you use all the time or it's hashtags that are related to your, your post. So um, I've found that using hashtags on LinkedIn has really gotten me more connections. Same thing with Instagram. Now, Instagram, you want to use a lot more hashtags than you do on, on LinkedIn. But Instagram, man, I've, I've made so many connections because of using hashtags on Instagram. On, surprisingly, I don't use a ton of hashtags on Twitter. 
um, because to me it's more about the actual conversation. And for Facebook, it's more of a um, like commentary almost. So, you know, it's like um, hashtag fail or hashtag, you know, like it's almost like I'm making a snide re remark or a, a, like a side comment when I'm using a hashtag on Facebook. Um, I, I have not seen a lot of value in using <laughs> hashtags on Facebook. Not, not for me, not in my observation. But all the platforms have where you can search a hashtag, a particular yeah. hashtag, but they're all relevant to that, that platform. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you could do a hashtag search on Google and find any hashtag that's being used anywhere. Um, but what I like about the Instagram and the LinkedIn is I find it connects me with the people I want to be connected with more um, almost automatically, whereas Facebook, it really doesn't do that for me. And Twitter, like I said, I just don't, I, surprisingly, I don't use a lot of hashtags on Twitter. Interesting. Okay. You know, uh, from LinkedIn, I noticed when you set up like a company page, mm -hmm. it will, you get two or three, mm -hmm. I think, in that company page, mm -hmm. like that it lets you associate your page with right. or something. Right. So that, and obviously you want to associate your page with Something that has. But I'm going to tell you what with LinkedIn, where the power is, is not in your company page. It's your profile. Right. Whereas on Facebook, you know, Facebook wants you to put your business information on your business page and not your personal profile. On LinkedIn, I, I encourage people to share business information on their personal profile because that's where the relationships right. are created. Wow, we need like three or four shows with, with Lisa. That there, and I, I still even have like more questions to like go through. But um, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to have like you come back. And there is so much to know. There really is. And, and just questions. And um, you know, I think it's. And I know if I have them, other people do too. Mm -hmm. And again, I've I've got a list. Everybody, I'm sorry. Like we'll have to. <laughs> like, well, we'll have to again have to kind of you come back. Website. I know we have all the information for mm -hmm. Lisa on um, available. Uh, and, and, Thank you so much for being on the yeah. show and being yeah, a guest. Like, fun, I'm so sure. glad that we, I took the time on Facebook yeah. and that we made those relationships. And thank you for like helping it's me. Kelly's fault. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> thanks for, um, thanks for today. No, I appreciate it. It's great to have you on. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Check out edgebusinessmagazine.com in the meantime. Until then, we'll see you next week. Until then, I never stop dreaming. <laughs>